Welcome back to Geek Harbor Paddling. Today we have a canoe clinic. My name is Ryan Grady. I was an athlete on this team, paddled internationally for a number of years, swam in college, came back, tried to paddle again. Um, today we're going to break the stroke down from the sort of the beginning to the end, uh, work some pause at the catch, some knee drive through the knee block, um, shoulder extension, and some hand and arm positioning and, and sort of attitude stuff. And then we'll do some video review, uh, lunch, and then get out there and do some racing, kind of work on that mentality. There's two things to slow you down. One is how much of your boat is in the water, so that's this um, part on the left here, and then how much of your boat is sort of sort of submerged sideways, um, and that's called skin friction, and then this is called sort of cross-sectional area. Your skin friction you can't change, unless you like lubricate your boat with Vaseline or something, you're just gonna, it's constant. Um, but this is something that you can control, um, and so when you take those big diving strokes and your boat plunges deep into the water, you're increasing this cross-sectional area um, by quite a bit and it slows your boat down. We want to think about driving your boat. Um, and so when we get on the water, I'll kind of go through some of the technique and, and things that, that kind of relate to that. But um, the visual I kind of want you to have in your head is how do I keep my boat on plane and kind of going up and forward instead of down and forward. A couple pieces, we're going to head towards the public boat launch on the far side. And then we'll kind of line up after that and keep going up and down the, that far side of the harbor, okay? Pause drill in the canoe is pretty hard, and I understand there's crosswinds, so do the best you can. Um, but basically what you're going to do is you're going to pause, you're going to catch, you're going to hold for like a half count, so one, and then you're going to stroke and work that hip spring return. And then you can go back, plant, hold for half a second, and then come back, okay? So we'll do that for 20 strokes and then you can take a break and really think about trying to be consistent with that pause and that spring motion, okay? Any questions? You pause in the water. Yeah, pause in the water. So catch, pause, and then stroke. You wanna think about connecting your hip to the paddle blade. You want and we're gonna to go towards the public boat launch on the far side of the harbor. Press that hip forward, Bowen. It's not about going fast, it's about being intentional. You want to work on connecting the blade with the water. You're not pausing before the catch. And if you need like a half stroke uh, to reset in between the pause catch, then you can take that. But really think about connecting that hip spring with the blade in the water. All right, everyone extend, go forward, and enter. Don't, don't stroke. Press that hip in. All right, stroke. Good, all right, now just reset, reset. All right, make sure your blade's in the water. All right, extend forward, enter. Press that hip, press that hip. Stroke. Extend. And stroke. Don't let that hip come back as you brace. Be comfortable being uncomfortable. And stroke. That was a really good job. And pull. Ben, that was great. Press that hip, press that hip. And pull. Re rely on your core when you get unstable. Extend. And pull. There's a tendency when you think about your hip to just kind of like follow it back instead of use your upper body to plunge in and then extend. So we're gonna think about spearing the water. Imagine there's a fish, or if you don't like to kill animals, there's a seaweed in front of you, <laughs> and uh, you're trying to spear it, you're trying to slice it right in half with that blade. So drive in, forward and down, and then engage your hip, okay? And one of the main ways you can push the boat forward is your front foot, and you're sort of relying on the friction between the, the front foot plate and your foot, to drive that force that you generate from your paddle into the boat. Thanks. Uh, that's okay, but you also push down. Something that doesn't push down is your knee. And so that 
front face of your knee block, think about that as like an impenetrable wall that when I connect with the water, I'm gonna push off the front face of this and I'm gonna drive the boat forward with that front part of that knee block. So we're gonna do a couple sets of spinners to one where you're just visualizing all of the force from your body going into that front part of the knee block, okay? 20 strokes. Ready, up. Drive that knee block. You almost wanna push it out of its hold. You're pushing on it so hard. Connect a little bit more with your hips. You're kinda setting your, your, your I, I kinda see you setting your paddle down instead of driving it. So try to be a little bit more forceful. Drive and push with that knee again. 20 strokes. Ready, and up. Slow rate, slow rate, Thomas, like half of that. So something that the American canoe uh, coalition likes to do is to stay upright because it's comfortable. So you, you're kind of paddling your race like this. But if you go over to Europe and if you go to these big races, you'll see a lot more of this, which is that full extension down onto your top knee. Continue to have that slow rate and really think about pressing your bottom shoulder into your front knee. So at the beginning of your stroke, I want to see everyone kind of looking like this. Where basically you could basically touch your, your knee to your shoulder. Reaching all the way forward and down. Further down, Thomas. Forward along the, towards the Nello sticker. Johanna, keep that top arm a little lower and a little bit more locked out. If you push, you're kind of pushing with it and that'll give you some shoulder problems. Ashley, you too, locked out on the top arm. I want you guys to emphasize your top hand drive, okay? So you want to go from being super forward and down to pushed up. And the moment your body kind of gets to that vertical, your paddle is out of the water, okay? So drive forward and down and then push up and pop the paddle out. So my bottom shoulder is connected to my hip. So when I rotate that forward, I rotate this forward and down. And then I connect with it. It's not, it doesn't have to be, um, so you can kind of, you can kind of start at this like really extreme overreaching and then your body kind of will naturally find where it's comfortable for it. Try to, try to paddle catch to catch. So instead of pausing at the back, pause at the front and reset. And that'll kind of give your your brain like a half second to kind of think about oh, where to go, what to put, where, I love before them. you enter. Good. Forward, forward. Get that paddle all the way to the tip of the gunnel. You're kind of paddle like this. I want you to look where you're going. I, I did the same thing when I was, and I still kind of do it. So it makes sense. I don't know if you have your, like, your watch down there by your foot or something. But yeah, um, yeah. so just imagine like a little kind of golf ball or something about a yard in front of the tip of your boat. That's kind of where you want to look. You're doing a great job of extending forward and down. You're, you're probably one of the better ones at it. That's great. But just make sure your head stays in line with your back. Right. We'll talk about hands. Okay, your hand position, your hand pressure. So, your top hand, you guys kinda got that figured out, we just worked on that, but your bottom hand, something I want you to think about is grabbing the paddle fully with all your fingers and your thumb, okay? It isn't like, you know, something where you can let your pinky hang out in front. So grab the paddle with all your fingers, and when you're in the water, I want you to grab it tightly and then when you, when you come out, when you're recovering, loose. I almost want you to be able to kind of flutter your fingers around the blade. Loose, relax. What we're gonna do and think about is 
you're gonna stroke exit and really think about keeping your chest big and high and letting your shoulders kind of fall down and relax and then kind of falling into the next stroke. So really think about relaxing your shoulders in between strokes. We're more relaxed, Aaron. Slower rate. Let your shoulders come back and down. Relax shoulders, but top hand high. 20 strokes. Ready, and up. When your back kind of hurts, you can compensate by like pushing your chest up and forward and keeping your core solid. And don't go as far forward and down. So sorry for dropping, dropping that upon you, but. Yeah, if you kind of keep your core, you can kind of compensate and push up instead of pull up with your back. Pretty good. Pop on the back. So that's okay at the, at the beginning, but when you actually enter, you want to be straight. You don't want to enter and then punch. Then you basically, you're grinding your shoulder into a pull. Something to kind of cue here would be, if you have the words on your front of your shirt, I would want to be able to read them the idea of being forward and down. Hips are doing good. They can be rotated a little bit more perpendicular to the boat. Um, and that kind of has to also come from your back foot position. So if you balance your back foot on the left side of your boat, you're actually kind of putting your hips in a disadvantageous position. So if you kind of rotate it and keep it almost, your back foot almost parallel to the right side of your boat, kind of on that right side, you actually allow your hips to kind of um, rotate kind of perpendicular and a little bit more you're, you're able to leverage a little bit more than kind of sit in this kind of back position um, for a while some people were doing some like stuff with foot straps on their back foot you could try that to see um, there's like this sort of stability like that kind of basically that fourth point of contact on the side of your boat that kind of generates a little bit more balance that's kind of typically why we see that but you i would challenge you to try to push your foot over to the right side and then if you're a lefty on the left side as well. Um, and that also helps your boat run a little bit more true. If you're kind of, if your back legs like this, you're actually gonna cock your boat in. Okay, you can see that you're kind of coming down and back instead of plunging forward. That's okay. Um, and then, my arms, yeah, but that's okay. Like, I mean, we're sort of taking long, big strokes. When, when you pick up the pace and when you kind of get going, I, I, I mean, yesterday I saw you had like pretty good top position, so. So then I do like is that you kind of pause at the catch and you let your boat run. That's good. And you're you're waiting to pull back on your hip until you're you have a full connection and catch. That's good. So you're engaging that core, engaging that back muscles. Also, you're doing a good job of not pushing your boat down. You're kind of like letting it ride up. That's that's also pretty good. So good job on the extension. You can kind of see that you're pushing down and forward and then you're basically you're you're placing your paddle in the water and then you're engaging and pulling. Uh, that's good. You put your top arm a little straighter and you can also see here you're kind of in this compromised position here where you're basically going to do a deadlift every single stroke. That's not really easy on your back. So something you can do to kind of counter that is be a little bit more um, be a little bit more intentional with your top arm and engage engage your core and that so that placing instead of going from place to pull go from place to press you basically want to shoot your torso through your hands and then the other thing i like that you're doing is you're not you're not kind of dilly dallying at the back of the stroke you're able to pull it out quickly a lot of times there's some people that will say like oh you need to like exit right at your front knee which is fine, um, and that works, but also if you're a little taller, it's sometimes hard to do that. It's hard to be super uh, tight and, and, and short. Um, so as long as you're smooth and you're quick through the exit, it's okay to let it kind of fall a little bit back. So something else I'm kind of looking for here is blade speed through the water. So how consistent are you pulling? Are you slowing down as you get more resistance or are you kind of able to keep a consistent velocity. You're actually doing pretty good. Towards the end, you kind of slow down a little bit, kind of as your plate, plate gets to right here. So think about continuing to accelerate through the entire stroke. 
the most power of your stroke comes from like basically here to here. That's where you're most um, sort of tight, balled up. You know, you're, you're stronger, closer to your core. So you're doing a good job optimizing that. Um, but you want that to be kind of the finishing part of your stroke. You don't want that to be the starting part of your stroke. Um, so I think for you, the biggest thing is going to be rotation and getting far, farther forward and down and then using that top arm to press yourself into that position where you can optimize and use that part of the stroke that you're already good at. So yeah, you could extend way farther. I think, so your paddle's like right here, kind of by that front cross beam, and the sticker's like right here. I think you could like reach at least to the front of the black. And that's about getting your bottom shoulder to the knee. Ideally, we want to see you just kind of fall straight in along that angle. So I think you could try to bring your hip forward a little sooner. So kind of in the middle of that pull, think about actuating that spring back forward. Men's canoe, you have a little bit more like just muscle in the upper body in general. So it's a little easier to kind of fake it um, with your arms and your shoulders. But for women, you have way more power in your hips and your legs. So using that and kind of anchoring your body, keeping yourself static instead of active, kind of bending all over the place, will like to anchor off your hips. And that's, that's kind of where you generate the, the power. Something to kind of think about, when I, at least when I was growing up, and like, I don't know, Kenny and Andrew and all these guys, it's like we probably spent hours on YouTube looking at paddling videos, and I must have watched probably every single one. And um, you sort of were like, well, I want to paddle like this guy, I want to paddle like this guy. And typically, you can draw things, you can draw fundamentals from them, but typically they have a like team of people dedicated to analyzing every limb of their body and then optimizing their stroke such that it fits them exactly. And we don't have that here, but you can kind of get there yourself if you draw from all these different sources. Um, but don't just try to paddle like someone um, just because they're fast. It doesn't really work. Think about kind of locking your shoulder blade um, down and in towards your spine and kind of anchoring there and then locking your elbow out. And that kind of will produce this sort of solid position. Um, you know, it's, if you kind of have this habit of doing this, it's hard to break that. but kind of originate it from a different position. Don't just think about your arm, think about your shoulder because that's what it's going to I think you're a little high on the setup. So you kind of want it to be maybe about this, this height uh, back here. So kind of like shoot forward instead of down. Um, good, good, good hip action though. You can see you're pulling, pulling a little late on the return. But the motion's there, just the timing. So you want to kind of shore up that return a little bit quicker.